welcome back to another video of H&H &H Express Model and Scale Trains. So as you can see the shuttle train is running and it is detected by the sensors here and then it waits 10 seconds and then it goes back to the other side and it does the same there. So with that everything works but I discovered some problems. Now it's a cloudy day so I don't have that problem at all but this sensor here is very sensitive in regards to receiving infrared lights or bouncing lights of this white ceiling. So I did some tests and that is something what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna add some black paper here and over there as well to cover the reflection of the wall. That is to resolve that the sensor will just go off at a certain point and that when the train is traveling here it sometimes stops which I can actually show you in a moment when the train comes back. So I just see that the train is traveling this way and as soon when this one hits so when something hits this the train will stop. And that is what the uh, uh, light from outside does here as well in reflection to this wall. And this was just a white tip. So that is what I'm going to change. I'm going to add a shielded or black paper over here. I'm going to do that there as well and then continue. And then let's discuss on what I'm going to use this track for. So it's not only a shuttle track but it will be used for many different purposes. So as mentioned earlier, the infrared sensors are not all that good in a bright environment. Uh, the sun is shining outside and it is reflecting towards this wall. And as you can see, there is no train here, but still the sensor detects the information or something. And what I'm gonna do, and I mentioned that already, I'm gonna add a black stripe or a darker stripe of paper towards it because I can show you that with this straight edge, which is black. If I slide it here, you see that the light goes off. And when I move the train, the train is detected. Now the train is not detected and if I remove that the sensor thinks that there is still a train and I can adjust the intensity of the detection but the problem is that it will not solve the issue because of the bright light of the infrared which is in the sunlight etc. So that is something what you need to be aware of when using infrared sensors that you need to make sure that there is something which doesn't reflect the infrared or light on the sensor. So that is what I'm going to do here to prevent it and I'm going to do the same at the other end so that we don't run into that issue as well especially during the day. So as you can see here I mounted the Arduino with the motor driver underneath here and the motor driver is directly connected to the Arduino. So the train is just coming here and you will see that a light goes on here. It just flashes. The sensor is detecting the train. So now it waits for 10 minutes and then it goes by. But I would like to add a plank to here as well so that I have a diverted track with a uh, switch. And that switch will be positioned around here. But looking at it, I only have one motor driver connected here, which can contain two tracks. And now I'm only using one side of it, so the other side would be for the second one. But I have already five segments on the track, which means I need to have three of them. And that will help in regards to the divergent track, because then I have six tracks to go by. So that is what we're going to do. We're going to individually power the tracks. But to do that, because I don't have enough 
connections over here on the Arduino, I'm gonna use this PWM PCA9685 servo controller board, which provides me the information to control those six. So that is the next step, but that will be for later. One thing which I would like to do, and that is a test here, I would like to test the current flow. As mentioned, I have different current sensors, which I'm using on the main track, but actually I would like to test this one. And since I now have this test track, I will be inserting this one, connecting it to the Arduino on the analog ports, and see what comes out. Maybe I can use these to check the trains better because every train has its different current. So that is what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna install it underneath here and reconnect it to the Arduino and I will show you that what the outcome is of the transformer to detect current on the track. So as you can see I installed the black paper at the sensor and I did that at the other end as well. That is so that when it's a bright day, the reflection of the wall doesn't hit the sensor because it absorbs the light. I also added this plank. I didn't screw this all down yet, but this will be where the diversion track will be. Switches will be there. Now you can see that the sensor does work. Uh, so the train stops. And that means that I'm going to use turnouts and the turnout will be over here on this track. And here is the other turnout which will be around here. And then I have a track over here and a track that way until that plane ends with some stoppers. So but that is for later. Let me go back down here because as mentioned I installed a current sensor. So here you can see that I installed the current sensor and I did one loop of one of the sides to the track to it and I will show you that in a schematic later when we go back to the computer and show the results. So this is the motor driver and the output one of them just goes directly to the track and the red one goes into that current sensor and the current sensor sends a signal to the analog input of the Arduino. And I will capture that output and see how it looks like. So let's go over the computer and I will show you that. So here we are at the computer and in the background you see the program which is loaded into the Arduino and in the foreground you see the output of the current sensor and how the train is being detected. So now it will hit the left sensor and then after 10 seconds it moves to the right and you will see a current flowing here. Uh, we have to wait, okay, here it goes. So we see values 399, 394, 398, 384, etc., etc. while the train is moving. And what I do in the program, let me scroll a little bit up here. What I do every time the train runs through this loop, I read the current 100 times and then divide it by 100 again so that I have a uh, average value of current what the train is consuming from the track. And that is, as you can see, it varies uh, reasonable each time it reads it. So what I'm gonna do next is when the train hits the sensor on the left side I'm gonna remove the train so that we can see what the value would be when there is no train running because with these values I don't know if there is a train running so let me take that train off and I have 10 seconds to do that so that's more than enough so now you would see that the value is around 399, 398 of it. And it will do its cycle until it hits the other end, but there is no detection at this moment. So with this, I can see that uh, 399, 398 
would be the right value to choose. So what I'm going to do in the, this program, I'm going to set the current average value, which is listed here, to 398. So let me do this. So that would be 398 because this value will be subtracted from the 398 and then we will get a right value. So instead of putting a minus in front of it, um, I could also do an add, but as long as it's short to zero so that we know what the value would be. So let me upload this one. So here it goes. So I set the value to 398 and you can see there is no train running. So 399 would also be a good value to be using uh, as well. So let me change that one to 399 and upload that one. Go back. So it loads it up. Well, you see it varies. You see it, 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 it all varies in regards to it. So let me put it back to 398. And I'm gonna put the train back on the track so you can see it. So you see 398 or 399, um, it's almost the same value. So let me put the train back on the track. Let me add the cargo to it as well. Come on. Wasn't all the way on the track, I see. Okay, so here we go. At first uh, initial state, because the program did not uh, start correctly, um, the train travels at a higher speed than the intent of the shuttle train. So now it's at the end. So let's see what values there are to capture on the output. So here you can see that it is uh, uh, minus 10, minus 3, minus 12, plus seven. So we can see that the value is uh, uh, lower than the 398 or higher actually than the 398 because it's a minus value. So that means that we are now able to detect the train, but I would like to set the intensity of it as well. And that is what uh, I need to play with. So the same process I'm using on my main track uh, to control the trains or to detect the trains and as mentioned I would like to test various current sensors and this is a good way uh, with this track to do that. So I hope you like this uh, sort of videos in which we go a little bit into details of uh, what I'm using. The next time we're gonna install separate uh, power sections to it. So uh, please give it a thumbs up and I would like to see you in the next video. Thank you and goodbye.